does anybody have a proposition for an official ranking for Goldfinger? Scott. I'm going to put Goldfinger at number one, ahead of From Russia With Love, number two, and Dr. No, number three. So it begins. And I, so it begins. It, Patterson, it you're going to second that? Let's, Let's go. go. I'm going to uh, Go ahead agree. and second it, because I, I fucking disagree. No way. Uh, that's fine. No way. That's fine, Charlie. You, you're Go ahead. Wait, who else agrees? Scott, do we have any more seconds? seconds? Do we have any more seconds? I, I, I do. I, I second that exact order. I also second it, unfortunately. God damn it. I'm... I'm also going to agree, but I will say from Russia with Love and this one, there's some aspects of both that beat the other. Yeah. And it, I agree. it was difficult. I agree. Yeah, it really was. Let me open up with saying like what makes this film for many people the best film is simply the fact that it like focuses. It is the template for pretty much every Bond film from here on out. And most people would agree like if you were to watch this film and then watch a later Bond film, these feel like the same thing. Like when we were watching the first two films, elements are there, but they're not quite yet there. And then when you got to Goldfinger, it was like, oh, this is what I want out of a James Bond movie. I want hot women. I want a cool, fast car. I want awesome action sequences. I want a great villain. Do you expect me to talk? No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. Which is hilarious because this film doesn't even have Spectre in it. It has nothing to do with Spectre. And a lot of people call this like one of the best films of all time. I agree that this is where suddenly everything comes to a head, right, in terms of the formula. We've been leading up to this for the last couple of weeks, which is we start off with Dr. No, great prototype, then it grows a little bit. A couple more of the key ingredients start coming in with From Russia With Love. And yes, by the time you get to Goldfinger, everything's there, including the way it opens with our little gun barrel straight into a prologue and then into an intro that has the intro song. Suddenly, oh, here's the James Bond formula perfected. And then they replicate this from there on. For me though, that doesn't change the fact that story is number one, right? Regardless of like, ah, well, in Fr From Russia With Love, they didn't have that Q scene where you go to Q branch and see them, you know, developing weapons and all that. Those so-called iconic elements may not all be there, but for me, that doesn't detract from From Russia With Love being a superior spy versus spy story with Bond stuck in this web of Spectre and the Lecter and all these different elements all kind of intermingling with different countries and organizations' interests all running into each other. And you've got misdirection and backstabbings and betrayals and just all this intrigue. Very much like a classical spy movie versus a spectacular spy movie. If I had to put points to why I think Goldfinger is better. Your first point was, it's the story that matters, right? Okay, yep. that's great. Does Bond change from the beginning of From Russia With Love to the end of Does From Bond Russia With Love? Does Bond ever change? Does Bond change from Does Gold Bond to ever Goldfinger change to the beginning? Over 24, 25 uh, movies? Charlie, Charlie, these po the Here point of these stories is <laughs> the excitement, the action, the suspense, the uh, spectacle of these movies. Now, there are some that do change where Bond does have a like emotional, like we talked about last time, he a vulnerable change. But to me, from Russia with Love, he doesn't do that. He doesn't do that in Goldfinger either. So what are we left with? We left with the spectacle, the action, all that stuff. All the iconic moments that people will go back to when it talks about Goldfinger are in this movie. I expect you to die, Mr. Bond. Odd job throwing his hat. The Aston Martin, which is brought back several times in the franchise, whether it's a new Aston Martin or it's the original DB5. This is the first Bond car of any of the films. Yeah, he drove f***ing other cars, but this is the f***ing Bond car. This is his Batmobile. This is his yeah. Batmobile, right? Totally random fact about the car is it's later used in the Cannonball Run, 1981. Roger Moore. Good day. You guys mostly talk about these things that are, Sorry. oh, it's iconic. It's like this, Sorry. this, this big thing. Q branches <laughs> here, the car. And I go, yeah, those are, those. I love those yeah, things. That's all hardcore bond. bond. That is great oh. bond shit. But for me, what it comes down to is the story. And the story for Goldfinger is great. The story from, from Russia with Love does it for me more. And I think what it comes down to is it's just a step classier. I just like the class of From Russia with Love. 
I think let, from Russia with love will that. always be towards the top for me. And I explain think over that. time Goldfinger might slip just a little bit. So um, where uh, does the class come in for you, Char? It's a slightly more complicated story with Bond, who is, again, somewhat restricted from like not having so many gadgets, not having these goofy scenes with, you know, a bunch of uh, Asian dudes, you know, ex <laughs> exploding as they fall over cliffs. You know, <laughs> this is one of those movies where every vehicle spontaneously combusts. I just dig the classiness of From Russia With Love versus the grander scope of Goldfinger. And that doesn't mean that I don't like Goldfinger. I f***ing love Goldfinger. I really do. I just get off on From Russia With Love in a different way. I think I just dig the story of the manipulation going on uh, through Spectre, the whole um, keeping Bond alive and exploiting Bond's talents in order to get what they want. Bond having to piece together this like, oh, you, you've been playing me. Now, I will say, though, that when it comes to the bad guys, I pointed out last week how Red fails right at the end, like right at the end, as awesome as he is. And as fun as he is, right at the end, he sells out for money. And it doesn't make sense because he would value the mission over money. But if it was Goldfinger in that place and, and if Bond said, bitch. I'll give you some gold sovereigns, paper he'd be like, what? Gold, so yes. gold sovereigns? Yeah, he would paper hand the shit out of that. <laughs> like he, yeah, he would yeah. sell out right away for <laughs> yeah. 50 slash 100 gold sovereigns. Yeah. Yeah. So, so th there's a little irony I'll there. I'll give you these full gold to That's fair. Charlie's argument is slightly swaying me. Like, I'm not oh. sure. So, it, join. Go ahead, <laughs> Go ahead, Nance. Wait, wait, but okay, wait, wait, real know, quick, yeah. real quick. Let's Go just ahead, take a, let's just take a quick recap. It's f all of you, and then Johnny's a swing voter, and maybe maybe Nance. Johnny, do you have uh, a leaning? Can you could you <clears throat> could you <clears throat> Sophie's choice between the these two movies? Now. I'm gonna do a pretty typical Johnny thing and see. I can see both sides here. <laughs> I think you I think that like Goldfinger. Like, it's so funny for me because as a first time Bond viewer, having seen Austin Powers, each movie helps me laugh more in retrospect. <laughs> at Austin Powers. Yeah. That's, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? I've not like, seen yeah. these films before, and yeah. all I can think about is Austin Powers. These two it's films so hard not were to. the definitive. Yes, this is, the, this is yeah. the backbone of Bond, and like everybody's yep. saying, this third one is where it hits Austin its stride. Austin Powers. But in retrospect, like knowing what Bond becomes, Goldfinger feels special. The first scene with Q, the sort of, it's like all of the stuff comes together in that way. But when you take that away, I agree with you, Charlie, that some of what makes From Russia With Love like its own thing, its own uniqueness even within the Bond catalog and the classiness of it, the sort of like smaller, it's weird because Spectre is in there, right? Which is yeah. supposedly a bigger scale. It's a multi-movie plot versus Goldfinger, which is a one movie villain, but it still feels like more intimate. It's the one guy coming after him. There's the one plot here he's not aware of. And so for me, I enjoyed From Russia with Love. I thought the characters were fun. What it comes down to is- I, I'm you, getting you guys there, say, Charlie. God you guys damn it. Say, I'm, oh, I'm we expressing have both are. sides. Oh, we, we have this iconic thing, that iconic thing. And I go, yeah, yes. but, but what is that core story? And and yes, I love Goldfinger as a bad guy. And, and Ajab is fun. I'll throw this out to you guys so I don't talk for another 20 minutes about how much I f***ing love From Russia With Love. <laughs> Please. Do you just like, right, you're just like Goldfinger's better, <clears throat> the character. Like, do you prefer Goldfinger to Red Grant and why? I think Red Grant is the better villain, especially and when you add in like, we get Spectre. I think From Russia With Love, especially that train fight scene, has better action sequences than Goldfinger. I found Goldfinger a little lackluster and I was kind of surprised that it was uh, much higher budget than From Rush With Love because I feel like From Rush With Love had way more explosions, way more action. Goldfinger had some like n cool shots in it, but this was all of that money Fort went Knox into thing. that ending. That extra million dollars all went into that final. I mean, even yeah. just the shots of like everybody collapsing Lassa. and just taking over that entire Fort Knox, right? I see your point, Charlie, about Red Grant. The problem for me is that Red Grant is not the villain. He's not the overarching villain. He is, but he, he is but essentially he is. Because a who glorified is? and he hold on. He's essentially a glorified henchman. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying I don't like Red Grant, but as far as matching people to people, I'm like, mm, Red Grant's more of a henchman 
who gets some really good lines. They have a really good fight at the end of the film. But I feel like Goldfinger is such a big presence throughout the entire film. I mean, he's in the very beginning scenes of the movie, yeah. and he's in the very end of the movie. He's always there. He's an active villain. What's interesting is that Spectre, the big baddie, you know, we know as Blofeld. We also have, uh, I was going to say Frau, but we have uh, Colonel Clem, <laughs> right? And <laughs> and um, and those characters, but they're not active. They're they're more of people like I, this is our plan, and we're gonna but, send but, okay, a guy but, but out bad, to do it. Like a good bad guy isn't based is based on screen time. It's not all, right. all about screen time. I'm not basing this on screen time. I'm not basing this on screen time. I'm basing this on the fact that Goldfinger is throughout the entire film, and every scene is Bond versus yeah. Goldfinger. You know what I mean? Like okay, it's okay. Not, How about this then? How about but that's this? That's why I think it's who, a better movie. It, so if if we're going based on if we're gonna put people on levels, right? Mm -hmm. Who is better then, Red Grant or Ajab? Ajab. Like you know what? Thousand Ajab. percent. <laughs> Red okay. Grant. Fuck off with listen, Red Grant. Listen, I know you love Ajab. Red Grant. I'm not hearing it. No, no. I know you love Ajab, Red Grant. Ajab. Ajab. <laughs> but Ajab is doesn't have miles to say. Shit. Think of like Ajab, like in the same way I think of the man with no name, right? Like yeah. Clint Eastwood's character, like what doesn't makes him so fascinating is he don't say nothing. You don't have to say nothing. He makes sure. his actions say everything that needs to he be said. He breaks a motherfucking steel pole in half with his hand. <laughs> Period. Yeah, Karen Bay was able to bend steel bars but with his teeth, okay? <laughs> Not bad for a man who started life breaking chains and bending bars with his teeth in a circus. Okay. <laughs> was he? Was that in the movie? That's how I felt about the From Russia with Love villain up until he decided to come in with the tacky British accent at the very end. Like, he wasn't yeah. saying anything for most of the film, and he yeah. was a more ominous Lame. presence. And then he yeah. came in and was like, old man. Oh, I'm so sorry. I only got M. Swar an hour ago. I busted every record getting here. Old yeah. man. Well, and he, I was yeah. like, this he, is really but he, um, weird. We, we determined, though, that he talk. is Irish, old though. Man. We determined that Red Grant is Irish. Yeah, I always thought he was Russian, but he's... Yeah. He's, he's an Irish crazy man. I thought he was German. He's Irish. He was Irish, and they imprisoned him in Britain, in a British prison. I was got... Um, I love odd job. I think he is cooler than than Grant. To be perfectly honest with you, Charlie, he's, he's more iconic. I, Grant, for sure. here's here's odd my job. take. Odd job as a henchman is the. Sh I uh, personally, I would say that Red Grant is the top baddie of because Blofeld just doesn't count as a top baddie. He's like the guy in Inspector Gadget. He he never does anything, but he just like sits in a chair. I'm a very true facto. <laughs> I mean, that's literally what the Spectre guy, that's what Dr. Claw is, is Ernest Blofeld, you know? Yeah, yeah. like, it, it, like Blofeld I mean, doesn't exactly do anything, he he's just, yeah, he's just like a faceless dude, like, it, it, and, and, and he, he carries through everything, he manufactures all of Bond's pain, but, um, Dude, true power is not being involved, not being seen, but controlling f***ing everything. That sure, is true sure. power. But, 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 like, every movie we would have to be saying that the bad guy's Blofeld. It's not Blofeld. It's, it's not. Like, it's, it's whoever he's brought in at, at that time. So that's why I think the main baddie is Red Grant, as opposed to Kleb, as opposed to the chess master. You know, the main baddie is Red Grant. Yeah. It's, okay. It's like in okay. Star Wars is... Darth Vader the bad guy or is the Emperor? And they kind of both are, but but in the first movie, it's Darth Vader, right? Like he's the imposing yeah. presence, he's the antagonist yeah. to the protagonist. True. So That's why it's hard to compare these job. things as if like we need, to, we need to qualify it based on like where people are in some yeah. hierarchy. Instead, it's All like, right. no, no, no. When it comes to From Rush With Love, the main baddie, like who's the main baddie? Blofeld, no. Chess guy, no. Kleb, hell no. Yeah. It's Red Grant, even though he, he we just kind of see him here and there and then he he dies relatively early. He's still the main bad guy. OK, but this then I'm go, is definitely the main bad guy. Then I'm going to go one ahead and then say Goldfinger is better than Red Grant. And okay, but, 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 Red but please go into that. Don't just quote him. Tell me. Tell me why. So, they're okay. better than Red Grant. I, first of all, I, I think I'll let Patterson. my favorite villain moment in this movie is actually towards the end of it when he basically tricks all those soldiers and just like yes. blasts them in the back. That is cold yes. yeah. bloody. Yeah. Well, especially when he just golden guns his Japanese contact or whatever, you know. Let's do the shoot for He just, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I'll give him that. But, but uh, seriously though, he is the original man with the golden gun. The only thing I didn't love 
Tanya for me was very flat. She How wasn't so? not chested. She no, because she's not like no. Dink. Dink, if 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 Dink, Dink. could have played her, Dink, Dink is. <laughs> everybody wants to Dink Dink to Dink Dink. 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 No, Dink. no, no, no. I just, I just like, I think, Dink. I, I think God, she Dink Dink is like nineteen sixties thick. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, oh, mm. that's hilarious. Oh! Anyway, I think well. I think more as like a as an actress, maybe even in just her portrayal of the character, because like the character, if, it just feels like she's on the rails, kind of getting shoved along the whole way through, and she makes a big decision in the end to shoot Frau. But I think that uh, she I, saves James Bond's God. life. No, we I covered agree. that last week. Yeah, but, I agree. You know, we we, we yeah. you covered that, and I agree. I think that's a big moment for her. But outside of that moment, she still sort of feels like she's. She has no agency until that moment. And that is her big moment. And that's good. But I just, it's sort of like. Her orders were to seduce this guy. And she, and did, she that. did it. But then it became real. Like she, and, and that was, that was my point last week. Maybe I just didn't Bond believe that it became her. real. I, that, that, that I could, you know. Yeah. I didn't believe that it became real. But for pussy galore. It is it any different? Not, it only yeah. became real in like two seconds because Bond forced himself on her. Right? Because you want a judo I think match. makes. I think because he makes, doesn't know that we Dr. No means bleed no. Into you guys, I think what this makes, episode, we need I think, to keep it to this film. What makes Wait, Scott, what the fuck are you talking great? about? The we're, rules we're, are, we're arguing the rules movies, are, Scott, we can talk up. about right. movies. Uh, uh, let, me, let me say this, let me say this. Right. The rules are that future movies don't exist. And I'm That's accusing true. you guys true. of treating Goldfinger, not as Goldfinger, mm. but thinking of it in terms of, well, it's got a Q scene, it's got the Aston Martin, it's got all these things that we know as iconic now, but I want you to judge it as you just saw these three movies for the first time and you're trying to figure out which one is the top and my argument my core argument is that from rush with love has this certain level of class and realism with it and there are certain moments of goldfinger that have this absurdity that i think knocks it into the second position i get that but there feels like when i get to goldfinger a breath of fresh air but you're looking at it like we're just saying, oh, the iconic moments make the movie good. But there is something to be said about if you go and see a movie and you remember all these specific moments, that means to me that those moments left an impact. And, and I know we, none I of watch, us are free of bias, watch, but you're saying that you I have bias. Watch, listen, That's why I want to I want to I want to press every Nathan, time I watch for who's a newbie. Love. For Every what time he I has watch to from say. Russia with Love, I kind of forget the movie. I completely forget the movie. There's so many great little things in the movie, and it's not just the iconic moments.